Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we are continuing the series that Amber Lynn did called The Struggles of Being Me. And today we're on part two. Part one, if you missed it, was just kind of things that you would expect. It was kind of boring, if I'm being honest. Hopefully part two picks up a little. So ready? Let's go. Hey guys. Okay, so welcome to part two of struggling being me. So if you didn't see part one, you should definitely see it. It was the video that I uploaded yesterday. So what this series is, it's a three part series of kind of the struggles I'm experiencing being a morbidly obese girl. And the reason why I am titling it struggling being me is because these are the things that I experience and I feel like there's a lot of, you know, stereotypes regarding, you know, people my size. So I kind of just wanted to clear up some and talk about some that I experience almost on the daily basis. Some are embarrassing. Actually, let's be real. All of them are. So let's get to part two. Yes, let's get to, let's get to. Give us the juicy stuff. We're ready, girl. So number one for this video is everything is a constant reminder of my weight. I feel like I am thinking about my weight 24 7 no matter what I'm doing if I'm going to the restaurant. Oh my god. Am I gonna break the chair? Am I gonna fit in the booths? I go to someone's house. Am I gonna make their floor creak? Am I gonna break their furniture? I go Somewhere where it revolves a little bit of walking. Am I gonna pass out? Am I gonna die? I see my reflection in the freaking mirror and I'm just like whoa literally everything makes me think about my weight. Honestly, absolutely everything. So I know she has this as kind of like number 11 in the big 30 item list, but to me, this should almost be number one. Like that to me would be the most difficult part of being as big as she is other than any kind of health problems. Like there would just be a constant reminder of your size. And like she said, worrying about, am I going to fit in a chair? Worrying about, oh, excuse me, worrying about if I'm going to break furniture. Constantly, you know, seeing your reflection, feeling your clothes clothes being tight on you, not being able to walk without getting out of breath, not being able to lay down in your bed flat because you feel suffocated. Just the constant reminder that you are such a large person. That to me would be the biggest struggle of all. Number two is I get tired doing anything. I get tired doing anything. Even just sometimes I catch myself, even I'm just sitting and I have to take like a really deep breath. Like I just got done walking. I'm like, girl, you didn't do anything. Like you think that would be an eye opener to hurry up and drop this weight. But it's like, since I experience eating disorders, it's, it's hard for me. It's a constant battle of wanting to be someone else, but being trapped in like a disease. But yeah, I get tired walking, I get tired bathing, I get tired doing chores, I get tired doing anything. Like, it could be absolutely anything, and I'm just like, well, that was tiring. Okay, just hang on a minute. I'm pretty sure she already said this on yesterday's list. So number two is also a pretty obvious one. I am less energetic. So yesterday's was she's less energetic and today's is she gets tired doing anything. Ma'am, I'm pretty sure that's the same thing. So number three is backhanded compliments. This is something I struggle with. And the most common one that I get, and I know a lot of other people get that are my size, is you have such a beautiful face. And I'm just like, oh, well, thanks. <laughs> Why can't you just call me beautiful? Why does it have to be you have such a beautiful face? This is something from high school that I will never forget. So as you guys know, I'm a lesbian, but during the time that I figured that out, I did go through a very, very large phase where I thought I was bisexual because you grow up and you think you're supposed to be with guys. It's the whole thing. That's a whole other story. But um, I did have a boyfriend and his name was Nathan and I was doing my makeup and he looked at me and he said, I can't even believe I still dated him after this. He was like, if you were skinny, you would be the hottest and most attractive girl on this whole planet. And I was like, thanks. Yeah, cool. That's like a complete 
backhanded compliment. Or like if you're like hanging out and you're like, God, I wish I wasn't fat. And people are like, you're still beautiful. It's like, bitch, I never said I wasn't. Like, it's just like these <laughs> like backhanded compliments that people just don't, I don't think they realize that they're doing them, honestly. Okay, first of all, the whole high school boyfriend story. Mm, I don't know if I believe it. Maybe he was like an Eric type, just like a male best friend. But second of all, I don't really understand. Like, is this really a struggle getting backhanded compliments? Like, if people are telling you you're beautiful, can't you just take it as a compliment and move on? Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like that much of a struggle to me. Number four, I freaking hate. I can't wear jeans and I can't wear high heels. I want to be able to wear both because I love high heels. Like, ooh, girl, you can dress up like any type of outfit. Like, oh, God, I wish. <laughs> like, I can't wear anything with a heel. Not even like this. Not even like this because that shit hurts my feet because I'm holding up so much weight on my body that a heel like this feels like it's like this big. And that's not even exaggeration. So that really sucks. And I can't find any jeans that fit me. Not even Torrid has jeans that fit me. I can't even tell you what size jeans I wear. So that's why I wear black stretchy pants and thankfully they go with anything. I have probably 10 pairs of the exact same pair of pants. And sadly, because the dogs here love me. Okay, that's a good thing. But they're putting holes in my pants because they're so thin and stretchy that their nails rip my pants. So I was trying to go, because I actually get them from Walmart, so I was looking on walmart.com because that's where I got them before and they don't have any more in my size. So I'm kind of like screwed and uh, it's just like these are the only type of pants I can wear and it sucks. I don't know, something tells me even if she could wear jeans and heels, she probably wouldn't, at least not that often. She seems like the type who wants to be comfortable all the time, so I really can't see her wearing them anyway, but I can't understand how that would suck if you wanted to wear them and couldn't. So number five is walking anywhere is hard for me. Uh, getting up off my bed and walking to the bathroom, I'm like... <sighs> You know, in the grocery store, that's like a big in. That is so hard for me. And I don't expect anyone to understand. Like, my back is in excruciating pain, which I talked about that in part one, you know, why I have back problems. And just amongst the pain, I can't breathe. So that's why I've been using, you know, the little Walmart scooters. And it's it's embarrassing. It's It's so embarrassing. Oh, my God. And when I go to the mall, like I literally will only go to a few stores and in between each store, I'll sit for like 10 to 15 minutes and take a break because walking is so hard, so hard. And it's just getting harder and harder with every pound that I gain. And people take walking for granted. People take most of these things for granted that I have to deal with on the daily. Okay, first of all, I feel like you're really starting to repeat yourself here. Part one, you said you get tired all the time. This list, you said you're exhausted all the time. Now you're saying you can't walk because you get tired. Like, come on now. You're cheating a little bit on your list, but let's just go with it. I get it. Like, I totally get where she's coming from. However, the way that she words this, it almost makes it sound like she's in a position that she can't get out of. Like, she's just stuck. She's just destined and doomed to be this way the rest of her life. Like, oh, you people take walking for granted. You don't even realize what I have to go through. Girl, you don't have to go through any of that. Why don't you get your little list out and why don't you put it on your refrigerator and every time you want to go and get a snack or get some DoorDash, look at that list and remind yourself of what you have to go through because of the things you choose to put in your mouth. So number six is like kind of like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Why did I even add this to the list? So I like to do my own laundry. So I'm able to put it in the washer just fine. But Becky has to get it out of the washer for me. The question is why? Oh my god, this is so embarrassing. So since I am a shorter girl and I have really short arms, um, but my stomach is huge and the washing machine goes down very deep. I can't, one, reach my arm in and bend down and grab my laundry because my stomach is in the way. 
Um, I know it's not just because I'm short. It's because literally my stomach is in the way. I can't even do my own laundry fully by myself. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, ugh, the struggles of being me. Okay, again, I feel like she's using this quote-unquote struggle to get out of doing housework and chores. Because, girl, all you really need is a little, well, maybe I shouldn't say little. All you really need is a step stool or something like that. Or you have the money. You were making real good money at this time. You could have bought a washer that's front-facing. I mean, I feel like she could have found a way around it. Number seven is what I have experienced a lot. One size fits all is a complete lie. That's just not true. I know when, you know, companies are making these clothing, they're not thinking that a 500 pound woman is gonna go buy it. But I feel like saying one size fits all in the society we live in today, in the generation that we live in today, is a freaking lie. I mean, back in the day, of course, go for it, write it on there, because there probably wasn't the epidemic of obesity as it is now. But one size fits all? Mm, no. How about one size fits many? I don't know, but it's just, it's just a lie because I get super excited. I'm like, oh, one size fits all because I'm part of the all category, aren't I? And then I try it on and whoops, I ripped it. Is that really a struggle though? I mean, are we really going to call it a struggle being you? Maybe an annoyance, an inconvenience, a disappointment, but is it really a struggle? I mean, just don't buy things that are one size fits all. Number eight is I do wear cardigans in the summer. I actually have seen a lot of people do that, even thinner people. I don't know why they're doing it, but why I'm doing it is because I'm very, 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 very self-conscious of my arms. Even as I'm sitting here, I am wearing a cardigan. Um, I feel like cardigans, you know, they do add more style to the outfit because if I was just wearing this like that, it wouldn't be you know, as cute. This does add more style. Cardigans make me feel like less of my rolls in my stomach is showing, makes me feel like my arms are more compacted and covered, which they are. And I just feel completely different when I'm not wearing a cardigan. I feel like I'm naked, everyone's looking at me and judging me and hating on me, and I just don't like that. So it can be 20 degrees outside or it can be 120 degrees outside. I'll be wearing a freaking cardigan. Okay, that is definitely not a struggle. That is a choice you are making because you are insecure about how your body looks. Take that one off the list. It doesn't count. So number nine is something you guys have seen firsthand is I waddle when I walk. That is a struggle and it's because of my weight and how it's proportioned and I, I just walk so weird and it's like while I'm walking, I don't notice that I waddle when I walk, but like if someone is filming me, that's like the only time I notice I waddle when I walk and that's embarrassing because that's how I walk 24 seven. It's like so embarrassing and I hate it so much because it just, it draws even more attention to myself in public. It's like not only am I morbidly obese, but I'm literally walking like a penguin and I'm like swaying back and forth. And I have actually mentally tried to fix this. I have tried to walk differently um, and it just, it doesn't work. And I know it's because of the weight that I am holding on to my body because I have watched earlier videos when I used to weigh like 350 and I didn't waddle like that. So it's definitely the weight gain and I just can't wait to lose the weight so I don't look like a freaking dummy while I'm walking because it's just really embarrassing. Yeah, I would say it's definitely the weight. Like when you look at her legs, she holds a lot of weight in her legs and imagine trying to walk with those um, constantly, you know, rubbing up against each other. I mean, I think the only way that you could walk would be to waddle. So I could definitely see how that would be a struggle. And I would probably be embarrassed too if I were her. So number 10, which is the last one for this video, but again, there will be a part three. So number 10 is booths in restaurants. I don't fit in really any of them. And the only time I can ever fit in a booth is if we're on an end booth and I can push the booth back. See, that's embarrassing because it always makes a really loud like 
noise and then like everyone in the restaurant is like what's that noise and then they look at you and then it's like obvious what you're doing and I can only imagine what their brains are thinking like this girl shouldn't be going out to eat like she can't even fit in the booth like I can only imagine so that's embarrassing um so every time I go into a restaurant I always say you know two for a table four for a table I always say table and there has been an experience where they, I asked for a table and they gave us a booth and in front of everybody I'm like I can't sit in a booth and it's just really embarrassing and it just sucks so bad but that's just another struggle that I experience. Oh yeah that one would suck. I definitely prefer sitting in a booth when I go out to eat as I'm sure a lot of you do and I think for her sitting at a table would not just be uncomfortable like the chair and everything but also you're kind of exposed more than sitting at, at a booth. So that would be difficult because if I were her, I would feel like everybody was staring at me even more. Like if she was in a booth, she could kind of hide her body a little bit, if that makes sense. So that one would be a difficult one for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys are really excited for part three because I feel like those are even more embarrassing. So get ready for that. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. All right, you guys, we made it through part two. And if you missed part one, she said that the last part, the third part is going to be where she tells the most embarrassing things. So definitely join me here tomorrow to watch that video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one with me. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to leave me a comment down below.